Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve jump game two, lead code number 45. So we're given a zero indexed array of integers called nums, and it has n elements. And we are initially positioned at nums at zero, so the first value of the array. Now each element nums at i represents the maximum length of a forward jump from index i. Now in other words, that means if you are at nums at i, you can jump to any nums at i plus j, where j is between zero and nums at i, and i plus j is less than n. So all this is saying is if you are at index i, you can take a jump of 0, 1, 2, or up until nums at i, you can take any of those jumps as long as it is actually in bounds of the array. Okay, so that's all the same as jump game one so far. The difference is that you need to return the minimum number of jumps to reach nums at n minus 1. And the test cases are generated such that you can reach nums at n minus 1. It's guaranteed you can get there. Okay, so let's look at an example here. 2, 3, 1, one, one, four. So if we started right here, then you could jump either one to here or two to here. Let's say that we jumped two to here. So it would be here, then another one, then another one. So that'd be a total of three jumps to get to the end. However, if you started here, took a jump of one to get here, took a jump of three to get here, that means that you can actually get to the end in just two jumps. And so that's what you'd want to return is the minimum number of jumps required to get to the end. Now let's first talk about the brute force solution for this, which is going to naturally be recursive backtracking. Well, we're looking for the smallest number of jumps possible. So let's have that as just like a global variable here. We'll just initialize that to be infinity, basically saying that we haven't gotten there yet. And we'll keep track of the current number of jumps we've taken. So jumps is just going to be zero so far. And of course, we'd have an index i starting at the beginning. So we are here. What is the minimum number of jumps we can take to get over here? And we're guaranteed that we can get there. Okay, so from here, we have two options. We could either jump one to here, or we could jump one to here. We have to pick one path for now. In general, you'd probably want bigger jumps. So for now, let's try going down the bigger jump. So we can get over here in one jump. So that's going to increment one to our jumps. And we can see from here, we're actually all out of paths. And so there's nowhere to proceed from here. We'd have to backtrack. And so we'd have to be at this level. We could try our smaller jump of just one. Okay, that would still be one jump. From here, we have three different options. We could go either here or here or here. Again, let's try bigger jumps. If you do that, we would have jumps goes up to two and we can see that we get to the end. And so here we'd adjust so far, we see that the smallest number of ways we can get there is just going to be two. And you could try some other paths, like maybe we tried this one here, you could get there to the end, but that would be a total of three jumps. And so since that is not smaller than our current smallest, then we're going to keep this as it is since we want the minimum. And ultimately you would exhaust all of your paths and you could return the smallest number of jumps it took to get there. Okay, so let's code up this brute force solution and then we'll look at the more optimized one after. Okay, so we could get n is equal to the length of numbers and then we'll get smallest. This has got to be a global variable that's going to be put into a recursive function. When we do that, we actually need it to be a list of a value. So we'll set it to be the float of infinity or the list of that. And then we'll just define a recursive backtracking function. So call it backtrack. It's going to take a current index i, which is where we are, and the number of jumps it took to get there. We could actually initialize both of these just to be zeros saying that we would start at the first index and we get there for free. So it's zero jumps. Okay, now our base case for this would be if i is equal to n minus one, that means we got to the end of the array and you would set smallest at zero because it's a list equal to the minimum of itself, smallest at zero and the number of jumps it took to get there. And that's your base case. So you would just want to return after that. Now, otherwise, if you're not at the end, we need to try and get there. So the maximum jump we could take is going to be nums at i. You could take any jump of one, two, three, up until that max jump. Now we want to stay in bounds of the array. So we'll set max reachable index equal to the minimum of i plus the max jump and n minus one. Okay, then for each new index in the range of, well, starting at our max reachable index, and we'll write i and minus one because inclusively, this is actually gonna be i plus one. So we're starting at the max index we can reach going down until just taking one step away from you, which would be i plus one. Okay, so this is just all of the indices that we can get to. We'll call backtrack saying we can get to the new index with a number of jumps plus one. 
This is going to recursively go through every possible scenario and ultimately it will set smallest to be the smallest number of ways to get to the end. Okay, so we can call just backtrack here. We have our initialization of zero and zero. So that'll start us at the beginning and you could just return our smallest value. If you are to run that, well, that's going to work. But as you can kind of see how I left up from before, it has a time limit exceeded if you are going to submit it. Now there's several, several ways you could optimize this code. You can even use dynamic programming, but anything you do, it's actually still not going to be as optimal as the greedy solution, which I'll show you next. Now, honestly, this one is a little tricky, so pay really close attention here. So basically what we're going to do is divide this into different regions. So this is the region of just zero jumps. This would be the region of spots we can get to with just one jump. This will be the region of two jumps because we could get from two to three, that's one jump. And then from the three, you could get either here or here. So it would be two jumps to get to those. And then by extension, these would be the region you can get to from three jumps because we could get to this from two and then you get to either of these. So at a high level, we're going to split these into regions, but we're not actually going to save that data. Now, what you would need is three variables. I, that's pretty standard. And then we would get two called end and far. Now, far is going to tell us the furthest point we can jump to. And since we could jump to either here or here, far is going to tell us the farthest we can get to, which is over here. Now, a question we're going to keep asking is, did I hit the end? When and that's true, it means that as we go to a new region, we are going to need one more jump because this was the region of zeros. And then it means we're going to the new region, which would where we need at least one jump. So at the beginning, we would have initialized a variable called smallest, which is going to be our answer. It would have initialized to be zero, but now we're going to increment it one because I hit the end. We're marking a new region. And now end is going to get updated to the end of our region. Because again, if this was the region of zeros, well, you could get to either here or here. And so it's going to mark that the end of the one regions is over here. And so we get that by setting end to be far. Okay, now we're going to increment i and we can see that we can jump three from here. Okay, so we could get either here or here or here. Well, again, the furthest we could get to is going to be way over here. And i is not equal to the end. And so we're not going to adjust that. When we increment i here, we would see that we can't get anywhere from here. This one is not useful. So we're not going to update far. But i is equal to the end because that means we got to the end of the one regions here. So anything we go to over here is going to need one more jump. It's a new region. And so we would increment smallest now to be two. And when we do that, we would set end to be far because far is the furthest we could get in that region. It's going to be the end of that region. These are the ones we could get to from two jumps. Okay, you would increment I, we can see that we actually can't get any further here. And so all we're going to do is increment I again. Now we can see we can get two away from here. So we could get all the way over here. That means that far could get all the way over here. And we did hit our end. So this is the end of the two jump region. And now we're approaching the three jump region. So we're going to increment one to this, we're going to set end to be the end of the next region. And again, we're going to increment I again, we could see that we could get over here, not that interesting. When we get over here, we'll see that we get to the end of the array and smallest is equal to three. Okay, so this would have a time complexity of just big O of n because we're really just moving through the array array with a couple variables and the space complexity is going to be completely constant. Okay, so let's code this up. Okay, so we'd get smallest, our return answer is equal to zero, we'd get n is equal to the length of numbers, and we would get end and far, those are both going to equal zeros, then we'll do a for loop for i. So for i in the range of actually, you would write n minus one here and not n. And I'll explain why in this loop, the first thing we do is set far to be the furthest we can currently get to, which is going to be the maximum of its itself and i plus nums at i. Okay, then if i is equal to the end, so if we got to the end of that region, well, then we're going to need one more jump moving forward. And we would set end equal to far to be the end of that next region. Okay, and at the end of this, you could just return our answer, which is going to be smallest. Okay, so let me just prove to you that this really does work. It seems kind of incredible, honestly. Now, the reason this goes to n minus one, which inclusive is actually n minus two, when we increment smallest, we're saying we need one more to get to the next region region. And so you wouldn't want to do this of n. So that means n minus one inclusive. If you do that, that actually is going to be off by one sometimes. So it might take a little bit to think about. But basically, because we're talking about the next region, you wouldn't want to include the last index here. Okay, so this does have a time complexity of big O of n and a space complexity of constant. Okay, so I hope this was helpful, guys. Check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already and have a great day. Bye bye.